this is Nikki from Little Blue Artworks and welcome to the Needle Felt Unknown tutorial. If you are working from a mini kit today, you will find inside a self-fill felting bag. This can be filled with lentils or rice and you just pull the drawstring and you're ready to get crafting. Alright folks, we're going to begin our lovely gnome project by looking at some of the tools here. Here I have a needle felting pad. This one here is hand sewn and filled with buckwheat tusks and I've got a set of three needles here and these are colour coded in green, pink and red. The green one is the largest and it's a gauge 32. This one is the medium sized needle in pink and it's a gauge 36. And this one is the smallest and finest needle in the pack and this is colour coded in red and this is a size 38. Each one of the felting needles has an extremely sharp point and most of them come in a triangular shape. Each side of the triangle has three barbs pointing down towards the point and as you push the needle through the wool these hook into the fibres causing them to agitate and mat together. And this is the felting process. So I'm going to begin this project with my largest needle. This is the green 32 and I'm just going to be showing you how to make one gnome today in this lovely green colour. And from there, you can take that and make as many gnomes in as many different colours as you wish. So I have around about five grams here of this lovely carded batting wool. I'm going to take off around about a gram and pop that aside just for an added detail for later. And this is going to be the main bulk of our gnome here. So I have it kind of flattened out on my mat. And what I'm going to do is roll it up into a bit of a cone shape. I've got more on this side than this side, so I'm going to choose this as the base of my gnome. And it's no bigger than the length of my felting mat, which is around about six inches. So first of all, I'm going to put my finger over between one quarter and one third of the way up there. And I'm just going to fold that over there. So now we've got a nice clean line here. So now when we roll that up, and we're going to roll it quite tightly. We can see now we have a bit of a cone shape because this end here is a lot thicker and denser than this end here. What I'm going to do now is just hold that on my mat, being very careful of my thumb and fingers, and start pushing the large needle through the middle of the wool. You can begin to hear a crunch noise as this goes through the wool and agitates those fibres felting them together. Just a few stabs in and that's already beginning to hold. We're just going to take it off our mat. We don't want to over felt it to our mat as the fibres of our make will stick to the fibres of our mat. So always be careful to take it off from time to time. Now I'm going to roll it onto its other side and start felting through this end. And then turning again, I'm going to pull these two sides together there, holding them down, careful of my fingers. I'm just going to push through, right through to the other side with my large needle. And then we're back to the original side. I can begin taking my fingers and thumb away from the area as that's beginning to hold. And now I'm just turning and stabbing and turning and stabbing. And this will become smaller and denser as I begin to felt all the way around. Now I've got that part starting to felt together. I'm going to work on this top part here. I want it to come and taper off into the end. This will be the very top of the gnome hat here. So I'm just going to begin felting as before, up and down, making sure to take it off your mat from time to time. And you can see already some of the fibres sticking to the mat there. So now I'm just felting up and down and turning, felting up and down and turning. And wherever you felt, the height of that piece of felt will come down in size. The more you felt it, the smaller and thicker the wool will become and easier to work with, to shape and sculpt into our little gnome. I'm going to work more on the top end here to try and get this into a bit more of a point. So I'm kind of squishing it down onto my mat as I'm felting it, just as it encourages those fibres to then really mat and felt together. And now really 
honing in on that very tip there so it's not all fluffy and thin comes a much better felted shape there on the top you can give that a little bit of a twist as well if you like now for the bottom end we want to make sure that this is nice and flat so i'm going to be felting in this way up towards the tip there always be careful of how far you're felting because you're holding it there with your hands don't want to be stabbing your fingers you can purchase finger protectors from some of the online craft and felting stores continue to felt in this way until it becomes really firm and flat on the bottom so it's got an area to sit on there we go now that's a lot more flat and time for the test it should stand up on its own so now what we're going to do is add a little bit of a rim just so that we've got the bottom of his hat now his beard and his body is actually only going to be around about a third of the size of this gnome so he's got quite a tall hat and a little body so i'm taking some of this wool i've got quite a lot here so i'm just going to actually part that in half and i'm just going to gently pull out the fibers to make a little bit of a length there we go then on my felting mat i'm just going to roll up the bottom there to make a nice fold and line then continue to roll so we've got a long sausage shape back with our gnome here and i'm going to pop that about one third of the way up and i'm going to hold it on putting these two ends all the way around so now i'm holding that on i'm just going to gently felt that on with my medium needle this is the pink one the gauge 36 so i'm just gently tapping through so it begins to hold and already i can take my fingers out the way i'm just going around the very middle of that sausage that we made just so it's holding on and now i'm going to come in at the top of the sausage here this is just a felt down area of the hat just above the rim that will help define that rim area a little bit for us there and then I'm going to go under it on this side here, turning as I go. And my gnome's not particularly hard felted, but if you want to make yours really nicely, firmly felted, just going over the whole thing, again, either with your large or your medium needle, will help firm up that whole gnome. He will become smaller the more that you felt him though. Bear this in mind as you're sculpting your wools. I'm just going to go over the body area to really help define that area as well as the bottom of the rim of the hat. And there we go, a very roughly shaped little gnome and I've got a little bit left of this green if I need to do any patch up jobs just to neaten them up. But next we're going to move on to adding our beard. Now you can use any shade of wool that you like here. I have tend to use whites and greys and browns, but here I've got this really nice mixed brown and greys together. And they come in a little bit of a length, which is nice, which looks a little bit beardy to me. So I'm just going to take off a little bit of that. Quite a long beard, so if I did pop this on at this point, obviously this is too big. So what I'm going to do is just fold that in half over my thumb. And now we've got a shorter beard, still a little bit long. So I'm actually just going to fold it a couple of times at the top. And just check that for length that folds coming just below the bottom rim of the hat there and that's not too bad it's a little bit too long but we can do a little bit of a side sweep on the bottom there so the fold is underneath there that i've rolled up popping it there on my gnome holding it down i'm gonna go in with my medium needle the 36 this is the pink one and i'm gonna felt through the beard right into the gnome and this will attach the two wools together and this is getting felted right just below the rim of the hat there. And there we go. This beard's a little bit sticky outy, so I'm going to imagine where the nose is going to go, right in the middle here. So holding that area down, and the nose will sit just under the rim. I'm going to felt this area down. I'm actually going to use my large needle because mine is sticking up quite a bit. I'm going to make a little circle there for where the nose is going to sit. And the larger needle will just felt it a lot faster into that shape that we want. So a nice little circle felted in there where the nose is going to sit. So for the back of the gnome, what we could do is just add a little hair this way, which would be the easiest and quickest way. Or if you want the length of the fibres going the same way as the beard, we can work it that way too. So what I'm going to do is because that's quite a big length, you can either pull it in half and if it doesn't pull, a pair of sharp scissors. We're just going to cut that now we've got a shorter length to work with. It's still too long at this point. So I'm going to fold it over once more. Cut that again. 
Now we've got some shorter fibres to work with. I'm just going to space that out over here. I'm going to need a few more to thicken that up. Again, I'm going to fold it over, chop it in half, then fold it over and chop it in half again. And there we go. You could trim it down even further so it's, it's shorter. But what I'm going to do is actually felt through with my medium needle. So the middle of these lengths of wool is right where the bottom of the rim of the hat is. And if I just gently tap that on, it begins to fix in that area and I can better see where the rim of the hat is as well. So it just gentle taps into that area. Now you can see that area here. What I'm actually going to do is just fold these extra fibres down this way and then felt right through that fold so that the ends of the other side of those fibres then point down towards the rest of the hair. Now as I say, that's just an alternative if you're working with lengths of wool that come in tops. If you're working with carded batting like this, you won't really need to do much more than make a small length and have that go around. I'll show you here with some grey, some grey carded batting. It's different because it's not coming in these lengths of wool like the tops here. It's going in all different directions. So we just basically pop that on like so and then felt that in under the rim. So I'm just going over all that brown wool again just to make sure it's definitely connected in just using my medium needle here and then I'm going to go over the top rim of the hat and go over the hat once more it's just going to help even out that whole piece of felt and I'm not doing big stabs here I'm doing little taps over the surface just to help even out the texture on that hat and that's something I can fuss over later. So I can see here is the groove of where I'm going to pop the nose just go and felt that quite hard so we know exactly where that nose is going. Now for the nose you could have it in white, you could have it in flesh coloured. Here I've got some nice pink and I've just taken a little pinch off this sort of fleshy coloured pink there. Some of my green fibres have picked up on my mat there. So you can either go ahead and pick that off or just use a different part of your mat or turn it over. So here I have a small pinch of this pink. And all I'm going to do is just scrunch that into a ball. So I'm going to do that by folding it over my thumb to start with. A few folds this way and a few folds this way and it's going to start to form into a little bit of a ball shape. Holding that on my mat and I'm being very careful of my thumb and fingers here. Again, using my medium needle, the pink one, I'm going to start pushing that through. A few stabs in and you can get your fingers kind of out the way for this part. Give it some general stabbing and that will begin to hold together. Obviously, the more you felt that, the more flatter it's going to come like a pancake and you don't want that. So don't over felt it. Take it off your mat. Now I'm going to hold it on the side because we want to felt that and shape it into a bit more of a ball shape. So I'm going to turn it and felt it on each side. Now I've got to the point where it's kind of in a ball shape, but I've got a little bit excess here, which I haven't bothered felting because I'm just going to use that as a holding piece. So I can then continue to tap all around the outside to smooth that over and come in this way too. Get it into a little bit of a round nose shape. And there we go. And those fluffy parts there, you can either felt them down or just have hidden underneath the nose like so. So you can just pop that in. Now you need to hold it either with your fingers, your nails, or you can use a couple of sewing pins here to hold that in place as you begin to felt it in. So I'm holding that in the little groove that we made earlier. And I'm gonna go with my medium pink needle through the bottom of that ball and right in. Now I'm going to go in this side, be the bottom of the ball, and the more you felt that on each side, the smaller it becomes and the more attached it also becomes. So it's safely and nicely felted onto our little gnome. And there we go. So before I finish him off, I'm actually going to give him a little bit of a bend in his hat here. So how I'm going to do this is just hold it in the position that I want and then felt it to secure it in that position. So firstly, I'm just going to bend it a little bit this way over my thumb. Now holding that in a position coming this way, I'm just going to felt through with my medium pink needle in that corner there. And that will begin matting those fibres to hold in that position. I'm going to do the other side as well. And I'm coming in on the bend here through also. 
and then I'm going to have it come back this way a little bit. This of course is optional, you don't have to do this, you could have it sticking straight up. But just like we did in the first bend, we're going to hold that in position and felt through that bend so it holds in that position. I'm going to come here in the inside of that bend and felt it in a little bit and then the inside of this bend and felt it in a little bit. Now we've got that with a little bit of a wavy top which I like. I'm just going to neaten up the hat area. Now you can use any excess piece of the same colour wool that you had before. You don't need much of it, just got a very thin length there. And if you want to tap that on, just really, really tapping gently over the surface, we'll begin to attach and you'll have a nice smoother loop. And if you went down to even using your finest needle, which is the red one, it will take longer, but it will give you an even smoother look towards the end. <laughs> If you don't have any extra wool, you can just do this the same way without adding the extra, whereas you're just very gently tapping over the whole area just to smooth out all those little bumps and lumps and get them looking all handsome, ready to display in your home. Now we've got him all nicely felted on. If you want to give him a little trim with a sharp pair of scissors, that will also help neaten them up a little bit. You can of course trim the beard or just have it coming there to the side. And lastly, I'm just going to mount our little guy onto a wood round here. So you can get these little wood rounds in most of the online craft stores. And I'm just going to use a little bit of glue to glue down the bottom of the gnome directly on to the wood round itself. And the glue I'm going to use here is Bostic All Purpose Glue. This is a really gummy glue and it's also clear drying and it's also extremely fast drying. And this is why I use this a lot with my sculptures. So once you squeeze that, it's just going to come continuously pouring out. So I'm going to be ready there with my lid and give this a little bit of a squeeze. This is really good at bonding both solids and fabrics together. You can just use whatever you have. I'm going to get his beard out of the way, ready to glue him on. And I'm just going to push that down onto the wood round, making sure he's standing up well. And in a few minutes, that will be dry. But there he is, guys. Such a cute little Nordic gnome and of course you can make it in many different colours and make as many little friends for him as you wish. So I hope you enjoyed your project today, whether it be making one gnome or maybe you've made a whole bunch of gnomes in different colours. This tutorial comes in both a mini kit, which is a brilliant taster project for someone who's just starting out or I have the larger kit where you can make up to five gnomes in all different colours. This kit comes with a hand sewn pad as well as a set of needles, all the colours you need and the wood rounds to mount them on. If you enjoyed your make today, don't forget to tag Little Blue Artworks if you're sharing on Facebook or Instagram. You can also join me on my website where I've got a whole range of other tutorials to follow as well as mini taster kits, large kits and surprise monthly subscription boxes where a mystery project is posted to your door every single month. You can also join my newsletter on the website to get a discount on your purchases and you can follow me on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube and TikTok. Thanks for watching.